Downtown Wellington, the business heart of the capital, Dwayne Cale makes his way to work. Dwayne's a senior manager with the National Bank. He's responsible for 500 employees in 32 branches in the South Island. Well, I started with the National Bank about over 20 years ago in the Hawke's Bay. Being involved in an organisation like this, you have lots of careers within one job or lots of jobs within one career. Dwayne's an incomplete paraplegic. He's partially paralysed as a result of a tumour on his spine. But he can walk with the aid of calipers and a stick. Did you get that um, report on representation for the South Island for business banking? Have you had a chance to have a squiz through that? Yes, I did. Thanks, mate. It was excellent. He's also a former Paralympic swimmer winning four gold medals at the Atlanta Paralympics. G'day, it's the combination of this experience as a top athlete and his business background that makes him ideal for the job as Chef de Michon for the Paralympics well, in option, Beijing. But if you've got the there's, there's clearly a link, um, being able to plan, um, be calm under pressure, um, being able to adapt to situations when you're confronted with things that need decisions, being able to go through a fairly logical thought process and why you're coming to that conclusion and then obviously being able to communicate with that to people so that they understand. In terms of our planning for when we go to Beijing in September, Juggling work and the chef de Michon's role is a challenge. Dwayne's about to go on his second reconnaissance trip to China. The bank is very big on personal development. Um, this is my personal development over the next couple of years. Dwayne makes a point of taking time out away from the office. Uh, Maxine, I have um, calipers under my feet, as you can see here. That, coupled with a, a walking stick, allows me to walk relatively short distances. And that's great for around home and it's great for around the office. So then when you get a great day like this and you want to get out or go for a swim, you jump in a chair. So this is my chair, um, lightweight, fixed frame, 4 kgs, really easy to manoeuvre in and out of the car. Um, a bit critical for when I'm going any distances, so obviously this is going to be an important facet in Beijing um, because I'm not going to have my own car to drive around in. Um, and there's going to be a fair bit of distance to cover, so something that can get in and out of pretty quick is really handy. You can't beat Oriental Parade on a great day. Um, days like this, it's fantastic getting out. Um, good to get along here and chase the kids on their bikes or come down for a swim. Um, it's, it's nice to get out and you know, it's part of balancing your life. Dwayne still swims several times a week, but no longer competes. Um, transferring is easy, you just sit on the side of the pool and and fall in. It's a little bit restrictive in the sense that I can't dive, um, I can't push off the wall with my legs and I can't kick and while, while it sounds like you know you can't kick when I swim, um, it's just surprising when you really can't kick with your legs just how much drag they are actually having on your body so all your strength is coming from here and um, down the, the upper part you know, of your body here. He reckons the Paralympic sport and the training is more intense than in his day. Um, when I was swimming, um, mid-90s, um, you had a coach. Um, these days, you have a coach, you have a nutritionist, you have a psychologist, um, you have this great big infrastructure around you, and you, you, pro you think your programs and your regime is a lot more rigid. Um, standards have definitely improved, um, and, and hence why you see records continuously being broken. Back home, Dwayne negotiates the steep steps to his Wadestown home. After a full day at the office, he's back on the laptop, sorting out logistics for Beijing. Uh, Chef de Mission is, is the head of the New Zealand Paralympic team, uh, and what that is required of me is to create the best possible environment for our athletes to perform in, it's as simple as that. The challenges in Beijing from what we can see at the moment are going to be huge. The transportation and getting around. Um, it's a big city, um, they have a lot of congestion, that will be an issue. Um, our biggest single issue will be smog. Um, and while they may be able to clean some of it up, um, it's just how our athletes will actually react to those conditions and that we don't know. In many regards they're incredibly advanced. Um, from an infrastructure point of view, um, they are well ahead of schedule and the facilities will be outstanding. Um, they will truly be world class. Well I'm just working out where we're staying in Beijing from the village and how we're going to get to the New Zealand Embassy. Cool. You think you could help me work that out? Yeah. Um, we're under exactly the same pressure as any other New Zealand sports team. Our requirement is to deliver 13 medals. And we did uh, And that will ensure that we can continue on with our programs into future years.
Duane started his international swimming career in Beijing at the FESPIC Games in 1994, so returning there next year will take him full circle. But it's all a bit baffling for his children, who still can't get a handle on his role. So tell me, what do you think the chef de mission does in Beijing? Cook all the lunches. <laughs> the lunches. Well, I guess that's part of the job if it needs to be done. <laughs>